everybody. In this video, we're going to be turning this space into this. Now let's get started. Right now this area is kind of a computer desk area. And we have some shelves here on the top, and a computer desk here on the bottom, but we don't really use it for that. And we need some more closet space. So what my plan is, is to make this into a usable closet space, kind of a built-in closet. I want to have drawers here on the bottom, and space for hanging clothes uh, here in the center, and maybe a little storage area on the top. So the first thing I have to do, I have to tear this little desk part out. Now before I just go and grab my hammer and start swinging and tearing all this stuff out, uh, when something is painted into a house like this, you want to go around all the edges with a knife and cut the caulk line. When you go and tear it all out, you'll be pulling the paper off the sheetrock and it will just make a mess and make the job harder in the end. So Okay, I have my cabinet built, or cabinet built, that's going to be uh, going in this slot. And I'm going to have to cut the baseboard back to allow my face frame and everything to fit in here and go flush up to the wall. So I have measured from the back to the front. I'm going to cut my baseboard. I'm going to use one of these, uh, one of these oscillating tools that I love, love, love. Now, if you don't have one of these, what you'd have to do, you would just take the baseboard off and recut it and put it back. Not, not a real big deal, but this just makes it so much easier that I can just leave it in place and I can have a nice, smooth, straight finished cut that I can call. Okay, so now I have my hole ready to go. Everything's cleaned out. I have all my nails pulled. And I scraped all the caulk off the sides and just got it, got it cleaned up so everything will fit correctly. So if you don't, go ahead and do all that. You'll, you'll, you'll regret it later. It just makes it a lot easier. So I'm just going to see how well this fits. And I made this a little bit smaller than the hole. And you will see why in just a second. Okay, so I have the carcass finished up and fastened in. Uh, and now I'm just ready to start putting the face frames on it. I'll show you a little bit of detail of how I put all this together. Okay, I'm going to try my best to explain this so you all can understand it. Now, this bottom portion, there's going to be drawers in here. And I want to have face frames on all this. So, and I also want my drawer slides to just fasten to the side of my box. So, I made the box a little smaller than the opening so that my face frames, when I attach them flush to the inside here, that it will just barely fit in this hole. Now my face frames are going to be two and a half inches. So what I did, I figured from inside to inside of this box, I subtracted five inches from the opening here, and that's where I made my inside to inside dimension. So that when I put my two and a half inch face frame on each side, it will add up to five inches and therefore be the size of my opening. Of course, I made about an eighth of an inch smaller to allow for a wiggle room, and I know I'm going to be putting a piece of trim on the edge, a piece of cold molding all the way up the side. Now for the top portion, I just fasten everything securely to the wall, and I'm going to be gluing and nailing my face frames to all the plywood I have here. It's all very secure, so it's going to hold my face frames just fine. This is what I'm going to putty the nail holes with. It's just a, uh, a wood filler that's sandable and paintable. The nail holes are putty. Uh, then I sanded it down and 
caulk all the joints good, and now I'm just uh, painting it. I've got one coat of primer on, and I'm working on the first finish coat. I'm probably going to do two finish coats. And I'm just rolling this on with a, a small foam roller. It leaves a good smooth finish. Right now, I'm in between a few coats of paint and I'm working on installing my drawers, mainly the drawer slides. Making your own drawers is very easy and I encourage you to give it a shot. I have a video that shows exactly how I make my drawers. There will probably be a link right around here and probably another one after this video. Right now what I'm doing, I'm installing my drawer slides down here and I have gone in here and I have laid out the correct spacing uh, according to the size of my drawers to hopefully make my drawer fronts where they can all be the same size. Uh, I'm kind of you know, playing with a lot of math here so hopefully I will get it right. But what I've done, I've, I've marked the center line for my drawer slides and I have squared it off with a line back and I go ahead and put the first screw in Square up the slide and go in with another screw. I'm just going to screw all these off and my drawers should be ready to install. Hope they fit. It's always kind of iffy. <laughs> now let's see how they fit. I'll be honest. I had to move them one inch. I had it mismeasured. But it wasn't all of them. I only had three of them installed. Three slides installed. And I had to move them one inch. So that's not too bad. slides. Right now I'm working on trimming this out. Uh, painting is not my strong suit, especially finished painting. Uh, I'm not too bad at it, but typically I have somebody else do my painting for me. A professional painter is just that, a professional who does a professional job. Now I can paint it, it'll look okay, but certainly will not be as good as someone who does it every day. Alright, now I'm going to show you how I attach my drawer fronts. Basically how I do it, I just screw from the inside out and it holds pretty darn well. Uh, so what I do to start, I take my screws and I go ahead and start a few. Okay, now that I've got that, I have my drawer fronts cut so that it should fit perfectly, or about perfectly, with a half inch overlap all the way around in about an eighth inch gap in between each drawer. So what I did, I cut some blocks to go on the bottom to start my first drawer on. They, uh, they're they about a half inch shy of my face frame. So I set my blocks down there, get my drawer ready, and get some glue on there. Set it up. And I just eyeball the center. Once it looks good, come from the inside. Tighten it up. Close it up. Add my spacer. And then the next drawer front. Just sits on top of that spacer. See that pretty side of it. A little flaw on the cut on that side. So I just set the next piece up, center it with the other one, and it should be ready to rock and roll after you put some glue on it, Trip. The glue helps hold it. Or the glue probably really does hold it, uh, but not only do you have the glue and the screw to hold it, screws to hold it, but you also 
when you put your pulls on, uh, I always make sure that my pulls go through the plywood and the drawer front so it's sure to hold it even tighter. Especially when you, so when, and even when you pull on the drawer pull, uh, it's actually put on the drawer and on the front. So you don't have to worry about it coming off though. One thing you need to remember when you're installing your drawer fronts from the inside, especially an MDF, is don't over tighten your screw because it'll strip out the MDF because MDF really doesn't hold screws that great. Uh, that's why the glue and also the drawer pulls are going to help us hold it tight. But just don't over tighten your screws. Now for this last drawer, it's a little different because of course you can't get inside with your drill and screw. So fortunately I'm using these heavy duty slides so I can just slide the drawer out and it's pretty doggone stout with these slides. So I can just pull the drawer out with my spacer on there. I already got it glued up. Just set it on here and it's going to be pretty, I mean it will be good enough for me and it will be really, really close to where it should be. See how close it is? installing my doors. I've got hidden hinges on these because I seem to like hidden hinges the best. So I'm going to see if I can do these by myself. There we go. Now, one reason I like these uh, hidden hinges or European hinges is because they're so adjustable. They're so much easier to install. Um, initially, before I ever used them, I was a little intimidated because you had to bore a hole in the back of the door and things like that. But once I tried it, it's extremely easy. So go ahead and get you one of those bits, uh, get a drill press, and start using these hinges. They're so nice. As you can tell, I only have two hinges in here, and I have holes drilled for one more, and I'm going to course put another hinge there I just don't have them on hand right now all right now just prime and paint we should be good to go and I'm probably going to take the doors off to paint them simple and also I have a lot of other videos on my YouTube channel Saley and such so be sure to go over there and subscribe now don't forget to comment like and share this video and also check out Saley and such on Facebook just go over there and give us a like there too thanks again and God bless